STV, your TV. It's PM in Douala, Cameroon. This is the English prime time on Spectrum Television. Our top stories. Police and gendarmerie officers continue to patrol the new Bell neighborhoods here in Douala as measures to instill order go into effect. Tonight we paint you a picture of the neighborhood that was taken hostage by armed gangs days ago. We shall also be talking cycling where cyclists and officials involved the Cameroon in the International Cycling Tour of Cameroon will resume. The race course tomorrow after a break today. We shall be evaluating the tournament in the course of this newscast. Those are our top stories. Good evening once again and thanks for joining us. Just as we mentioned in our top uh, stories, Relative Calm has now returned to the New Bell neighborhood in Douala after days after the population of Ngange and Babylon were taken hostage by a group of uh, armed gangs seeking revenge for the death of one of theirs. Police and gendarmerie officers have been making patrols across the neighborhood as activities uh, have have already resumed. We have details with John Paul Summer, who was there earlier this afternoon. Walking through the streets of New Bell, relative calm has returned to the neighborhood. Most people have opened their shops, and life seems to be returning to normal in the areas of Ngange. And Babylon. The barricades that were mounted in these zones have been removed, but the presence of the forces of law and order is felt. Spotted around major road junctions and in the streets, the gendarmes are there to ensure that the peace and tranquility that reigns in New Bell stays. From the Maria Gretti area right down to Cemetery, experiences a lot of calm. Even at the heart of the action in Babylon, Everything is going on fine, as if nothing happened. Bike riders and taxis can be seen plying the streets of downtown New Bell, and some roadside vendors have resumed their daily activities. This calm can all be accredited to the top officials in the region, who reacted promptly to the harassment of inhabitants in the neighborhood by a group of unscrupulous individuals. The National Executive Committee of the Social Democratic Front, SDF, will meet uh, tomorrow in Yaoundé at 1 p.m. The meeting convened by Party Chairman John Fundi will involve all NEC member senators and parliamentarians of the SDF as well as those of NAC. The agenda has not been made public. We shall be keeping uh, tabs with that story. The non-registration of products at the African Intellectual Property Organization, OAP, based based on graphical indications has been identified as one of the reasons why uh, qualitative community products are unpopular in the international market. The issue was unveiled by the organization in a, in a recent publication in which our reporter, Larinetta Paji, read her report. Honey from Oku, yam from Bay, rice from Sommesok, pineapple from Bafia, Clichy from Gaundere are some products in Cameroon known based on quality, traditional knowledge and production methods that can be recognized as a geographical indication. Going by the most recent publication of the African Intellectual Property Organization, the actual level of information acquired by producers in certain rural areas concerning the importance of geographical indication for economic development is still very low. Geographical indication is a form of intellectual property right that protects producers that emerge from particular areas and help define a product in the course of any international competition. Meantime, taking into consideration institutional arrangements, producers of particular geographical indications are being encouraged to either as individuals or groups register their produce so that more local products can become popular and can be appreciated at national and international levels. 
Cameroon's Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development intend to support the registration of new products this 2017 as its contribution to the modernization and development of added value products in the country. New Director of Budget at the Ministry of Finance, Cyril Edu Alo, has been installed into his functions. He was installed yesterday by Finance Minister Alamin Usman May and takes over from Antoine Felix Samba. Let's now have the, his reaction shortly after he was commissioned. Let me thank, first of all, my Almighty God for his grace. Thank the, the Head of State. Uh, to give me the confidence uh, and hit the budget department is a very big responsibility. The challenge, uh, the Minister of Finance in the uh, installation uh, address has determined the, the challenges. The challenges is the, the reduced of uh, spending uh, uh, public and uh, and uh, put in place a strategy to to ameliorate, ameliorate the, the, the recovery the recovery of uh, the resource, the state resources the newly installed director of budget at the ministry of finance felix edu alo talking to our reporter larinette apaji inhabitants of mukunda and bojongo villages we are now in the southwest region of the country have been sensitized on how to identify and read road signs as well as preserve one of the access routes to the limbe omni sports stadium passing through the villages this follows observations by authorities over the bad use of this route by some road users Ibune Willindis. Well, shall be coming back to uh, that report. Medical equipment worth 56 billion francs have been donated to Cameroon by the Japanese government today in Yaoundé. The agreement, the agreement was signed uh, between Central Pastor du Cameroon and the Japanese Embassy in Cameroon. The medical equipment uh, will serve for diagnosis of cancer and other infectious diseases, according to the acting director of, this, of Central Pasteur in Cameroon, Madame Susan Belinga. She said the equipment will go a long way to improve health infrastructure in the country. Public Health Minister Andre Mamafuda used the occasion to uh, salute the great cooperation ties between Cameroon and Japan. We shall be uh, coming back to that report by Bune Willindis. Sleep soundly, not your life. That is the slogan of this year's edition of the World Sleep Day, celebrated today as the day to commemorate, uh, uh, as the day is being commemorated today. Medics advise that babies, adolescents, and, and even adults need an amount of sleep. Veronica Ajay reports. Along with diet and lifestyle, sleep is critical to good health and well-being. Quality sleep improves alertness, mood, productivity, and memory. Reason why? Medics advise the use of a regular bed and wake time, not sleeping over 45 minutes during the day, and the use of comfortable beds. Adding to this, excessive amounts of alcohol should be avoided four hours before bedtime. One should equally avoid heavy, spicy and sugary foods for us before bedtime not leaving out distracting noise and light which should all be eliminated sleep usually passes through five stages and a complete sleep cycle takes an average of 90 to 110 minutes newborn babies need 16 to 18 hours of sleep a day two years old children need an average of 11 to 13 hours Children from 5 and above should sleep between 10 to 12 hours, while teenagers who definitely do not sleep enough should get 8 to 10 hours of sleep a day. From 20 upwards, 7 to 9 hours of sleep is advised, and persons older than 65 years of age have 5 to 7 hours of sleep a day. Babies sleep much because it is vital for acquiring and consolidating memories learning and brain development, contrary to elderly people 
who are likely to find their quality of sleep worse than before because sleep becomes more fragmented and not deep. Researchers advance those with obstructive sleep suffer heart failure and stroke. Those who rarely get an uninterrupted night's sleep will often experience high blood pressure and an increased chance of diabetes. In effect, limited sleep causes obesity, depression, and poor memory. This year, the slogan is Sleep Soundly, Nurture Life. Let's come back to the report by Ibune Welindis, who was telling us about uh, a sensitization campaign held in the villages of Mukunda and Bojongo villages, where the access route to the Olimbe Onispo Stadium passes. They were being uh, trained on how to preserve the routes as well as identify road signs. Her report. It is often said when a road passes, development follows. Given the blessings and challenges that comes in using the road, and with the aim to preserve roads, this sensitization campaign on access road number three, Limbe Omni Sports Stadium at the Mukunda and Bonjongo villages is of utmost importance. It's very important. As you know, what is a sparrow? The choice of Mukunda was not by good luck or by chance. Uh, looking at the new reconstructed road, we thought it's important to create awareness and promote responsible sexual behaviors for people along this community. You should understand that uh, the road also, the newly constructed road came with its own uh, defaut, as we call it in French, and uh, so social uh, de, uh, social ills. So we thought it's important to create that awareness. First, we promote to talk about HIV, because the, the population volume will increase, and the road also brought a lot of development which the influx of people uh, has also increased and social habits will change so it's important to discuss about this with the community to the chief of mukunda village in the past it was difficult for his people to go to limbe town but now in about five minutes they are able to be in town for just 200 francs hence looking at the importance of this campaign he has this message for his people the sensitization campaign is very important Important to the community because uh, at first, unlike before, the people did not know how to use the road. But following the talks that we had, I'm sure and I want to assure you people that the community can well man uh, know how to use the road. Uh, there are a lot of signs, road signs that we have on the road, and uh, we did not know how to. Interpret. Today, with the help of the talks that we had, I'm sure that everybody in the village can know exactly how to read the signs so that they will not face any problems as far as the signs are, road signs are concerned. In both villages, a presentation on the use of roads, functions and preservation was done whereby women were sensitized on the effects of throwing refuse in the gutters. They had a walk along the road to see various road signs and how to interpret and use them. Since roads connects and brings together people, which makes these inhabitants vulnerable, a talk on HIV AIDS was also part of the event where they learned preventive measures, dialogue before using a condom, and how to use a condom. The director of a sale which the road contract was awarded to also used the opportunity to thank inhabitants for collaboration. In Bojongo, the director Misa Ugo Atta was dressed by natives in the Bakuri traditional way, given the title Mula Lyunga for a job well done. Chairing these events, Mr. Tata Julius, representative of the Southwest Governor, congratulated the people for accepting development and responsibility as far as road is concerned. Two renovated schools by the company was visited. Meanwhile, various traditional groups spiced the event. Let's now take it to our future page and tonight we are looking at an accessory loved by many women uh, which they cannot do without. We are talking about handbags. Our reporter on the beat, Mumamanda, takes us to a local production unit in Mashe, Congo, here in Douala. 
Donne, euh, Salazar Manette, Salazar Chizé, euh, Salazar Chien. All the big names and brands any woman would go after in the pursuit of a handbag worthy of the name, but this time with a little twist. One that takes you to the back corridors of Mashi Congo in the city of Douala. Before we take on how these copies of originals have been fabricated, let us address the subject of handbags and women. If fashion experts have labeled it an accessory, it in no way dampens a fact. The handbag is inseparable from the woman. A safe haven for all her permanently needed items and the perfect match for color and style. A reason why the choice of a handbag is no small matter. Getting the right raw materials, handbag building 101. We call the raw material the skin. It is the basis for whatever bag we wish to make. At a local manufacturing site, wanting in space and equipment, the next step will be finding the right position to spread and then get to the drawing board depending on the desired shape and size. This done, the composer traces and cuts out the needed pieces. One of the most important stages of production is assembling. We carefully select the pieces to form the desired shape, and sometimes cartons come in handy. It takes about half a day to complete a bag. The whole package comes together under the grumbling sound of the sewing machine. Final touch and zipper in place, your Louis Vuitton, Maché Congo version, is ready for the market. Ironically, for a uniquely feminine product, very few women are involved in the chain. An imbalance quickly leveled up at the retail tables. Fast forward to the distribution phase. The brave rain and sun, Monday to Sunday, at Marché des Femmes, wooing other women into spending the right amount on the right bag. It's not a the prices vary depending on the bag. This one, for example, costs 4,000 francs. And this other one, 3,500 francs. Whether it is making, buying or just carrying, the handbag is an ever-interesting topic for the typical woman. Now, let's take you out of the country. A preliminary version of U.S. President Donald Trump's budget proposal released Thursday has been greeted with criticisms from members of both sides of the country's biggest parties. We have developments with the VOA. The president touted his budget proposal to an audience in Tennessee this week. While protecting our national security, you see what we're doing with our military. Bigger, better, stronger than ever before. A top Republican in Congress expressed his support. What I'm encouraged by is, is the notion that we're going to begin rebuilding our military. Democrats and many others said America's strength is not only in its military power but also our strength springs from the healthy education and the well-being of the American people. Trump's budget office director said the White House wants to strengthen defense, law enforcement and border security without adding to the deficit. This budget simply reallocates and reprioritizes re spending as any family or business would do. Humanitarian groups worldwide say the reduction of U.S. foreign aid threatens the lives of the most vulnerable people. But this engagement with the developing world could hurt America, an analyst told VOA in an interview via Skype. China is there. They're, they're in the last decade, 700% increase in their engagement in development, in actively doing economic development. We pull out, those countries are more likely not to be trading and exporting with U.S. goods and services. So that coal miner might not even be thinking what's happening in Africa, but 95% of the world's consumers live outside of America. That's where our exports and goods and services are going to help also invest in our economy. Critics warn that failure to support countries fighting disease outbreaks, terror threats, environmental disasters and famine is unwise because the results could come back to haunt this country. White House officials say Trump is doing exactly what he promised on the campaign trail. Zlatisa Hoke, BOA News, Washington. Sports football. Apache Song Fu, Cotton Sport of Garwa, and Young Sport Academy of Bamenda are the three Cameroonian clubs uh, involved in continental assignments this weekend. They will be playing 
in the CAF Champions League as well as the Confederations Cup. Harry Wana has the fixtures of the games. After the 5-0 defeat inflicted on Young Sport Academy by Club Sporty Foisen last weekend in the ongoing 16th final round of the CAF Confederations Cup, the boys of coach Ndube Bosu have been sharpening their skills here in Dualam ahead of the retailer game scheduled for this Saturday, March 18, at the Duala Reunification Stadium. We are going to prepare psychologically more than physically. So for now, we are preparing just to do. Uh, although we are not sure to, to be like Barcelona, but uh, we are going to try our best so that we should win the match to prepare the next days. Means Union and Lyon Blessé for the next matches of the league. The problem of communication, Coach Ndumbe says, greatly contributed to their poor output in the away clash in Tunisia. The referees were Algerian and they were talking Arabia with the players on the pitch and even the technical meeting was uh, in Arabia to be translated in French. So you can imagine that uh, uh, when we started the match, they did what they have to do. We, we conceded two penalties in less than five minutes and it was just to kill completely my players. If the Abaqua boys must get their heads off the water of elimination, then they need to score at least six goals and prevent their opponents from scoring any goal. For failure to do so, then coach Ndube Boso and his boys will be doomed for elimination from the 2017 CAF Confederations Cup. Meanwhile, Apeja Zonfu, another Cameroonian club involved in the CAF Confederations Cup, will clash with Asset Mimosa with the hope of turning the tables round owing to their 2-0 defeat recorded in the away game. The encounter will be played this Sunday, March 19, at the Yaoundi Omispo Stadium. Kotospo Dogarwa, Sherlock Horns with Snaps Football Club of Madagascar, come Sunday, March 19, in the CAF Champions League. A victory for the Cotoners will save them through to the next stage of the competition owing to their one new victory in Garwa last weekend. In cycling, the 14th edition of the Cameroon International Cycling Tour is gradually drawing to a close with just two laps left. So far, no Cameroonian has been able to lead the podium on a yellow jersey. Philemon Bale has an evaluation of the tournament. After covering over 500 kilometers in six separate lapses, the cyclists are taking a break today, Friday, March 17. After the sit lap from Douala to Kribi, covering 157 kilometers, it is Belgian Roland Routke who was first to cross the finish line after 4 hours, 4 minutes and 13 seconds. The first Cameroonian cyclist, Arthur Stella, only came in 10 seconds after the Belgian on position number 5. On the overall standings, the German Ruhr Nicodemus keeps the yellow jersey with an overall time of 17 hours, 18 minutes and 59 seconds after paddling for over 566 kilometers, registering an average of about 40 kilometers per every hour. Rahuni Salahidin of Morocco comes in second place behind the German with a 56 second lap difference. Disappointingly, no Cameroonian cyclist yet to get the yellow jersey at any point in time. Clovis Kamzo Abesolo is Cameroon's finest in this year's international cycling tour, occupying the 15th position on the overall scale with a five-minute drift from the top spot. The race continues on Saturday, March 18. The cyclists will cover a distance of 119 kilometers from Bumnyebel to Mbalmayo for the seventh lap. The last lap comes up on Sunday between Balmayo and Yaoundé and that will determine the winner of the 14th edition of the Cameroon International Cycling Tour. And it's on that note that we end this edition of the news on STV. I want to thank you very much for your kind attention. I'll be with you same time as for Monday but before that the weekend bilingual edition will be yours tomorrow Saturday. Have a good night. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.